Look Up With Me, Neil deGrasse Tyson, A Life Among the Stars, A Literally Cultured Read Aloud, written by Jennifer Byrne and illustrated by Lorraine Nam. Introduction. Most grown-ups have forgotten what it was like to be a kid. Some don't remember on purpose, hurrying life along as fast as they can. For others, memories of being a kid simply faded from view. I'm a full-grown grown-up. In fact, I'm so grown-up that I have grown-up kids of my own, but I still feel like a kid. I've felt like a kid my entire life. Why? Because I'm a scientist. Scientists are kids who never lost their natural childhood curiosity about the world. Kids who lose that curiosity, usually around middle school, become normal adults. But kids who retain that curiosity eventually become scientists, either in their hearts or in their professions. So even as you grow older, Never stop being a kid. This will guarantee that the world, even the universe itself, becomes and remains your playground of curiosity. Neil deGrasse Tyson, Astrophysicist, New York City. On an autumn afternoon in 1958, in the city of New York, on the third planet out from the sun, in the Milky Way galaxy, a little baby boy was born. Neil deGrasse Tyson opened his eyes and there it was, the universe, just waiting to be discovered. At first, Neil's world was small. His building blocks and little books, his yo-yos and gyroscopes. During the days, Neil went to school, to the park, and to museums. At night, he looked out the window of his apartment building and saw other buildings, streets, and streetlights, and here and there, small bits of sky, until... One day, Neil went to New York City's famous Hayden Planetarium. As he sat beneath the high arc of the theater, out went the lights and shazam, wowza. Neil's mind was launched into outer space. In a single instant, his world expanded a hundred times, a thousand times, even more. Projected on the huge dome above his head was the night sky with countless thousands of stars. A gigantic, spectacular, beautiful cosmos Neil never knew existed. And in that moment, his life was changed forever. Neil started reading everything he could about planets, moons, and stars. He wondered where comets come from, what makes galaxies spin, and how big is outer space. He learned the word astrophysicist, the kind of scientist who studies all those things, the kind of scientist he wanted to become someday. Neil pasted glow-in-the-dark stars all over his ceiling in the shapes of the constellations. At night, with the lights out, it felt as though his bed were floating in the huge magnificence of space. After exploring the skies with binoculars and a small telescope, Neil was determined to get a bigger, more powerful telescope to bring the heavens even closer to his eyes. 
and he figured out just how to do it. Dogs! For two entire years after school, Neil walked neighborhood dogs. Big ones, small ones, fluffy ones, scruffy ones. At 50 cents a walk, he worked hard and finally got his telescope. Night after night, Neil carried his heavy telescope up to the roof of his building. Nervous neighbors called the police to report a tall burglar with a dangerous weapon. When the officers arrived, Neil explained it was a telescope and showed them the beauty of his favorite planet, Saturn magnified 100 times, its golden glow, its icy rings, and many moons. So although they arrived with fear and suspicion, they left with awe and wonder. Because of his passion for astronomy, Neil won a scholarship for a voyage across the Atlantic Ocean to view a total solar eclipse. Surrounded by stargazers, researchers, and scientists, Neil was beginning to find his people, his future. Then, at only 15, Neil was invited to give his first astronomy lecture. He was paid $50, which equaled 100 dog walks and made him realize he could actually make a living by talking about the universe he loved so much. In college and graduate school, Neil's mind traveled farther than it ever had before. Flying into outer space with runaway stars, diving into the cores of black holes, and leaping from galaxy to galaxy. And when Neil wasn't being his cosmic self, he enjoyed being his dancing self, his wrestling self, his picture-taking self, or most of all, his laughing self. When Neil graduated, he made sharing the wonders of the cosmos his world as a teacher, a researcher, a writer. He wrote a magazine column in the made-up character of Merlin, a five billion year old visitor from the Andromeda galaxy who answered people's questions about astronomy and the cosmos. Then Neil got what just might be the coolest job on earth. He became the director of the Hayden Planetarium. In the very place that expanded Neil's world so many years before, it became his turn to expand ours. Today, in his dazzling sky shows, Neil takes us to the edges of the universe, inside the center of stars, and back to the beginning of time. Not only does Neil bring us the stars in the sky, but through books and tours, TV and radio shows, he has become a star himself, right here on Earth. A superstar of science, shining his bright light on the secrets of the universe. Neil believes everyone should have their mind blown at least once a day, and he does his best to make sure that happens. Black holes may contain whole other universes. There are more stars in the universe than grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. If you get close to a black hole, your body will be sucked into it and stretched and stretched as you disappear into its depths, 
which is called being spaghettified. Shooting stars are really meteors entering Earth's atmosphere, and most of them are smaller than a blueberry. If Earth didn't have an atmosphere to scatter the sunlight, the daytime sky would be as black as night. Outer space is completely silent. Because there's no air there, it has nothing for sound to travel through. Someone could shout right in your ear and you wouldn't hear a thing. Neutron stars are the densest stars in the universe. They are so dense that one teaspoon of a neutron star would weigh more than 20 million elephants. In five billion years, the sun will expand and grow so large that it will engulf Earth and all the planets in the solar system. The wonders of the universe are always with Neil, day and night. At the beach, Neil thinks about the eight minutes and 20 seconds that sunbeams take traveling through space at the speed of light to land on his nose and toes to warm his earthly body. When Neil sees stars through his window at night, he thinks about how their light took thousands of years to get here and that there are newborn stars whose light won't get to Earth for a thousand or more years into the future. Invisible stars for now. Then he closes his eyes and goes to sleep in his beloved cosmos. As much as Neil loves the amazing facts of the universe, he is also fascinated by the mysteries and the unknowns, the just beginning to be knowns, and the barely knowns. The mysterious pull of invisible dark matter, the push of dark energy, expanding our universe ever larger, ever faster. And wormholes, the faster than light passageways through space and through time. All the mind blowing secrets that will be explored by the next generation of scientists and the next, perhaps by you. One simple wish Neil has for the future is that all of us, every person on earth, go outside at night and look up, look up, look up at the moon, stars, and planets, and think about the fact that we are made of the very same stuff they are, of the stardust atoms of long ago exploded stars and that we are all part of the very same thing, this amazing, beautiful, spectacular, mind-blowing universe that is our home, that is our world, that is us. <laughs>